what's up you guys and welcome to nothing to see here episode four of the podcast we are here we are now we're gonna have ourselves a good old time it is officially super bowl sunday as i'm recording this so uh happy super bowl sunday i hope your team wins i could care less about football honestly all i really care about to see would be uh the weekend's halftime performance which i'll probably have to see after the fact because i'll be working uh during the super bowl but you know gotta make that coin as you know hope that went too loud i just saw the wavy bar go way up when i clapped anyway uh today's podcast is gonna be quite interesting we're just gonna be talking about um an individual uh, uh, it's my great grandfather. He is, uh, the father of my grandfather who I mentioned in the last podcast. His name, uh, is Stan Carey. Now he unfortunately, uh, passed away back in, what was it? 1985, something like that. And, uh, unfortunately I never got the honor to meet him, but he and I would have hit it off so so good because uh let's just uh kick it right off my great grandfather stan carey you could probably look some of this up online you know there's probably some stuff still on 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 online about him but my great grandfather stan carey was real big in the news he used to um do the news at at my hometown you know 13 w 13 wmaz was the um the station he would always uh do and because he did that, he got to interview a lot of big people. He got to meet a lot of famous people. And, you know, he, uh, he collected a lot of autographs and stuff from, from over the years. And hence why I kind of do the same thing. You know, I collect autographs as well. But we'll get to that later in the podcast. But um, he met people like, he met presidents. He met actors, musicians, governors, and, uh, and Ripley. That Ripley, yeah, uh, a few, uh, uh, it was what, Christmas Day, I uploaded a vlog uh, where um, I showed the, uh, the, one of the uh, Ripley autographs, and my uncle let me have, it it was one of the autographs from Ripley that he signed when they met way, way back in the day, but um, it's crazy, you know, I I wish I knew more about him, but uh, I I, I will tell you this, um, he was on the radio the day uh, of the attack on Pearl Harbor. In 1941, uh, and just just random things like that, you know, he got to meet, you know, like the uh, John F. Kennedy, all those presidents, and like I said, he passed away uh, in like middle of the of the uh, 80s, and unfortunately, I didn't get to meet him that, but that really sucks. Uh, but like I said, he could get you any autograph you wanted if 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 you just simply asked him for, uh, let's say. A John Cena autograph, just just somebody completely random. He most likely could probably get it for you. That's why he and I would would be just so tight. Uh, but going from that, you know, I actually got to meet a lot of famous people myself, as you may or may not know. Um, we're gonna go way back to 2017, and this was pretty much one of the first real famous people that I actually got to meet. I actually met Chuck Lavelle back in like 05. He was the you know the piano player for the Rolling Stones, and I got his autograph and everything. But uh, this is the first celebrity you know famous person that really kind of blew the water out out of everything. It really just kind of blew my mind, so to speak. Um, I went to uh, Angry Grandpa's memorial service, and it was it was a long trip up there. It was like a four hour drive. I know I've talked about this a bunch, but this is just for the people who haven't heard the story before. You know, I'm actually in uh, Michael's vlog, giving him the painting that I made for him, and then I I got to meet Mick Jugger Nuggets. Uh, it's just it's so wild how 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 all this kind of happened. You know, everybody was there. Keemstar was there. Dame Drops was there. Uh, Dame Drops was just in a freaking uh, what was it a Wendy's commercial or something? Uh, we we were eating at, at a restaurant and they had the TV going, and I looked up. It was like a Wendy's or I think it was a Wendy's commercial. And they showed Dame Drops in the commercial. I'm like, I, that's the, that, that dude was literally at the funeral. And now he's on a, a freaking television commercial. Isn't that crazy? But, um, yeah, uh, I, I arrived like a minute or so late because the trip was so long. And I, the, 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 uh, the church was already completely full. So I kind of sat in the back and I watched everybody come up and speak. And, 
And I, I, I knew I saw Dame drops, and I think I, I saw Keemstar sitting there, and I did not know that McJuggernuggets was there. That kind of shocked me, like completely shocked me. It's it's a weird feeling when you see somebody that that you like as as a as a fan right in front of your eyes. It's such a weird feeling, you know. You're so used to seeing them on the television screen or the movie screen or the YouTube uh, computer screen, but when they're standing right in front of you. It's such a weird feeling. And um, when uh, when the funeral service was over, I started walking up to see Michael. And I looked to my uh, right, and I saw Jesse and his dad. They were getting up off the off the chairs, and I was like, uh, uh, uh. I was freaking the fuck out. And uh, I guess he just saw from my reaction. He looked at me, and I guess he just saw from my reaction because I, I guess I was putting off a like, oh my god, that's Jesse. He holds out his hand and goes, "Hey, what's up, man?" I'm like, "Hey," and I was like, "I didn't know you were going to be here." And then I walk up to Michael, and I uh, I give him the painting, and that's how I was in the vlog. And after that, I walked away, I walked outside, and then I met Jesse again, and then I got a picture with him. It, it, like I said, that. That was a moment. That was a moment that I will remember for a long, long time because that was really like my first, you know, famous interaction that just really just kind of blew my mind. Uh, I think in 2018 because I uh, every year I go to this convention. I, 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 you know, I love to collect autographs. I have a whole bunch of them now. I need to do an updated autograph video for you guys just so you can see how many I, I've collected over the years, I, and I'm still collecting. But every year I go to this uh, horror movie convention in Atlanta. It's called Days of the Dead, and they do it every year. And uh, the, uh, this year will be my fourth year going if it's not canceled due to COVID. <laughs> but um, at the end of February, I'm going to try and go up there uh, and get some more autographs. But anyway, uh, my first uh, trip up there, I met people like uh, um, Bill Mosley. You know, from the Rob Zombie movies, I met, um, and then my second year, because I went back, I went back the, uh, in 2019, yeah, it was early 2019, and I met, uh, oh god, I'm getting off track, let me go back a bit, uh, in my first year going, I'm also, like, one of, this was probably one of the most intense celebrity encounters that I've ever had. And I wrote it, I, I, I've told this story before. Uh, I met Matthew Lillard, who played Stu from Scream. He played Shaggy from the Scooby-Doo live-action movies, 1 and 2. If there's any celebrity who was the most intense that I ever met in person, it was by far Matthew Lillard. Not, not saying that that was a bad thing, because he was very humble, he was very nice, but he was very intense, you know. He wanted to give you every little bit of his attention and he was going to do that with every person he met that day, you know. You know, it's not like a, 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 a douchebag celebrity who just, like, signs an autograph and says, okay, now get out of my face. No, I'll, I'll, I'll at least give him respect for that, the fact that he wanted to give all of his attention to you for that moment. And I walked up to him, and I was talking about, you know, finishing school and wanting to, wanting to get into filmmaking and I shit you not, he looked at me dead in the eyes and would not break eye contact and grabbed me and was like, just fucking do it. Quit dicking around and fucking do it. And he said that. That was word for word of what he said to me. And I was like, uh, even if I flip the, uh, the autograph that I have in, in my, uh, locker over there, if I flip it around, there's like three letters that he, uh, wrote down for a film school in, uh, Canada or something. But yeah, he, he was the most intense, but okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, now we're my second year of going to Days of the Dead. I met like uh, Edward Furlong. Bless his heart, though. Um, uh, I think he. Uh, well, I, I I don't think I know. I know he battled with with drug problems. Uh, but uh, when I first arrived there, me and my mother, uh, we were in like the uh, upper section of the hotel. You know, the whole convention's in the basement of the hotel, so we have to kind of catch the elevator to go down. And she had to go to the bathroom, so I was kind of standing there waiting. And then I'm just waiting there, minding my own business. And then my mother comes out, and she's got this weird face on. She's, like, pointing behind me. And I'm like, what, what, what? I turn around, and it's Edward Furlong, you know, the kid from Terminator 2, walking towards me. And he just walks past me to go, I guess, go downstairs to the convention. 
I didn't recognize him, honestly. Um, he has put on some weight, you know, which is, which is pretty normal for, you know, especially when you had a drug and alcohol problem and you're, if, if you're a child actor, for some reason, it always seems like the child actors always have the biggest issues, you know, coming up, but it seems like he's doing so much better now. But uh, I felt so bad for him, you know, when I went up to him and he signed my picture, he didn't even know how to spell, you know, he, and that's, that's the thing, you know, when you're on the drugs, you know, you really kind of forget certain things. Like he forgot how to spell and his signature looked all wonky. But like I said, I'm, I'm glad that he's doing better. I think he's doing better. And I, I like I said, if I ever meet him again, I wish him all the best. Um, I also met that year, uh, Greg Nicotero, who does the special effects makeup for all sorts of movies, especially the walking dead. He wasn't even supposed to be at this convention. He just showed up. He wasn't even on the guest list. He just showed up and just started walking around, and I had to get a picture with him. I was like, wow, because you never know who's going to show up to these things. That's why That's why I try and go every year now, because you don't. You have no idea who's going to show up. Uh, you know, you have a list of people who are supposed to be there for appearances and do uh, interviews and, and, and Q&As and signing autographs and taking pictures and all that, but you never know who's going to be there. And it's not just people who are signing autographs either. It's it's wrestlers, you know, the, 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 uh, people, vendors show up and they sell shit. It's a really, really cool convention. I highly recommend you check it out. It's Look up daysofthedead.com and, and see if they're in a town near you this year because I think they're going to Vegas, Chicago, uh, and some other place this year. So they're, they're going all around the world or country this year so i'd give it a check uh give it a look and see um who all will be there if you'd like to go and i also met the one and only sid haig bless his heart uh rest in peace uh, a few months after i met him he passed away um it's actually quite a funny story of how i met him you know we got in the line for sid haig and it was a long line and like he wasn't there it was just like i guess his handler for the day or something or manager i don't really know he was texting Sid uh, on his phone, and he's like, where are you at? The line is all the way down the line, and, and this is word for word of, of Sid's response. I'll be there when I fucking feel like it. Word for word. And uh, I think another 10 minutes or so go by, and then he te- the, the guy texts him again. He says, okay, the, the line is now wrapped around the whole room. Uh, where are you at? And he says, I can't find my belt. That's just so random. He says, I can't find my belt. <laughs> and then like another 15 minutes goes by and he finally walks up and he sits down and uh, he, I, I come up to him, both me and my mother, we both get signed pictures. And, uh, and then uh, sadly, like I said, he, he passed away uh, a few months later, right before um, the Buffalo trip, which if you would like for me to do an episode on the Buffalo trip, be sure to leave a thumbs up up on this video and I will do one on the Buffalo trip. You talking about a cluster of a, of a, of a, of a, of a trip. Oh my God. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Um, I also met, you know, a lot of people from Halloween, the original and remake. Uh, now we're in like 2019 and 20. So I met like Sandy Johnson, PJ Souls, Danielle Harris, Tyler Maine. Uh, I even met Malcolm McDowell, uh, Linda Blair. That was a surprise. And uh, but yeah, um, and, and you will you will, you'll see a lot of people like this uh, up there as well. And it kind of caught me off guard. It was kind of rude. You know, I'm a, I'm a legit fan. You know, I I uh, want to get an autograph to keep for myself. I literally saw somebody in the line for Linda Blair right in front of me getting like a thousand things signed and she had like a GoPro attached to her, her, uh, shoulder. Cause she's going to resell it. There's a lot of people that are just selling stuff, you know? And, and there's also people that were hired to go up there and wait in line for people who didn't feel like going up there and waiting in line themselves. That's actually a real thing. You can actually hire a person to go to conventions and sign stuff for you. So you don't have to do it. I mean, like, where's the fun of that? You know, wouldn't you want to meet the person that, that you know, I mean, kind of taking the fun out of it. But yeah, um, I, I do, I do tend to, I do intend to go back again this year. It's at the end of February. Uh, a lot of people are going to be there uh, right now. Uh, William Forsyth, 
uh, the chick from Frankenhooker, who I got to meet. I got to meet her. Um, i trying to remember who else. Uh, they're having some more, um, uh, they're like, they're doing like an aliens reunion there and a bunch of other people, like P the guy from gremlins, a bunch of other people, but I do intend on going back and I, I am going to vlog it. I'm going to, I'm going to try my best to vlog as much as I can down there. I did do a vlog last year at days of the dead and it, it worked out pretty well. I filmed a little bit of stuff, but I, I'm going to try and film a lot. I'm going to try and film at the very least, maybe 20 minutes worth of footage at days of the dead but yeah um if you want to if you want another autograph collection video too when i get back from days of the dead uh i will try and do that as well but honestly this is a short podcast because i really f don't really have much else to say but uh i got a couple more things i want to talk about uh, i don't know how many more episodes of the podcast that will be uh there's plenty of stories I can tell, but like I said, my memory is terrible. So I'm, I, I will remember something after, like, like for example, if uh, I did a whole podcast ded dedicated to my school history, uh, I will, after the video went up, I will, I'll immediately remember things that I should have talked about, but uh, I will bring those up in another, another podcast. So once again, uh, thank you guys for listening to the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it, um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.